Hello, welcome to Minute Realms, my name's Stuart, and welcome to a quick look at Blood Red Skies for Mortal Games. Now, it's something I've had my eye on for a little while now, but I um, was waiting for the right time to, to, to pick it up. Um, and this starter set, so the, the included the airstrike booklet and um, two sets of planes, so some Spitfires, Mark IIs, and some BF-109s, um, was sold as a sort of a Battle of Britain starter set. Um, where the current starter box itself is specific based um, and it was fantastically reduced ran from £81 down to £25 in the sale just before Christmas um, and I had some vouchers as well which meant the, the whole set came to me for I think for £15 including postage which I just <laughs> really couldn't ignore um, and the airstrike book is the full rules with a lot of the extra bits they've added as far as I can tell I've not followed the game that closely and as I said you get two sets of, of six planes there and all the, all the cards and things you need to play the game as you would if you bought a normal starter set. Blood Red Skies is a 1 to 200 scale World War II air combat game designed by Andy Chambers. And that name might be familiar to many people, especially of my generation and maybe a bit older. Um, he was one of the main Games Workshop designers around the time that Rick Priestley was there and Alessio and sort of some of the, the golden era for many of us who look back nostalgically <laughs> at our, our early gaming years. But it's um, he's a well-regarded um, games designer. It's definitely something that uh, had piqued my interest more when I found out that he'd written the rules for the game. Now, let's take a little look at the, the boxes of aeroplanes that you get. So first up is the Supermarine Spitfire Mark II. Um, you get six of these in the box. Um, you get uh, six of the flying bases, which they call advantage flying bases. So they actually pivot um, forwards and backwards to simulate uh, um, you know, the position you are within the game. Um, you get aircraft card, tells you about the Spitfire and all its stats and things. And you get six trait cards. Um, some double-sided pilot skill discs, which I think go on the bottoms of the bases. Um, aircraft marking sticker sheets. You actually get some stickers that can go straight on the plastic models with this. So you can play it straight out of the box. And then no decals, I, I noticed. Um, and as I'll be painting mine, um, I would have, would have liked some decals in the box. But you can, you can purchase them separately, and I, I ordered some. Um, and you get three action cards as well, which uh, um, just sort of add to the game. It's all packaged very nicely. I quite like the design of the cards and things. Look pretty good. Um, and the, the card stock seems very, very good quality. The, the bases are extremely good quality. I like the way they kind of bend backwards and forwards. And all in all, I'm, I'm pretty happy with, with that. The planes themselves fit nicely on and off the stands. You don't need to store them or glue them on. There's a very nice snug fit. Um, and they look pretty cool when they're on there. Now, the, the plastic itself is um, very sort of toy-like. Um, I don't think it's Warlord resin. I think these may be produced outside of house. Someone might be able to tell me in the comments. But it feels like the kind of plastic that you, that you may get in the toy. But saying that, the detail is, is, is perfectly good enough for, for planes of this size, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with them. So let's also look at the Megaspit BF-109Es. So like the Spitfires, you get six of the planes in the box, and then essentially the same stuff. So your six advantage flying bases, an aircraft card, the double-sided pilot skill discs to go on the bottom of the flying stands, aircraft marking sticker sheet again, not, not decals, um, and then three action cards to play during the game. The quality is exactly the same as with the Spitfire set. Miniatures plastic is a different colour, again, designed so you can use them straight out of the box. The same plastic material, but again, once painted up, these are going to look pretty cool, I think. Now, me being me, even I've just told you why I finally got into the game with a really bargain uh, starter set in the sale. I actually went out and got the official Battle of Midway starter set as well. It was available very, very cheap on eBay for, from a seller that I, I've forgotten the name of right now, but I know they're linked to my one of my local game stores, Gloucester Models, which don't have a website. Um, so if you're in Gloucestershire in the UK, it was well worth checking out. Um, but um, it was a really, really good price. And I know... For, you get slightly better quality card stock in this than you do with the airstrike set so it's slightly thicker card for the game pieces you get good quick quick reference sheets and things like that as well so i thought you know what such a good price i'll pick it up i'm gonna get 12 more planes and because it's specific based you obviously get different aircraft than you than you would in the others so you you've got um you get f4f wildcat fighters and you get a6m 20s and i just thought you know what it's going to give me a way of fighting in a different theatre without buying too much extra stuff um, and it'll be fun to paint up some, some different nations. 
Now, the rules you get in the sort of standard starter are that the basic rules, the airstrike book that I, uh, I've shown you already, is the expanded rules with the extra bits in. So I won't really need this little extra booklet that's in it. Um, but it's always good to kind of, you know, have the have the option to have the, the more basic one. But as far as I can tell, that the, the, the rules that are in this booklet form the beginning of the airstrike booklet. Anyway, good thing about this set, they do come with decals rather than just stickers like the, the individual packs of planes did. So that was cool. That means I don't need to purchase them some extra. Though the stickers do, do come in the set as well for those who, who don't want to paint the miniatures. And you get all of the stuff you'd expect to find in the starter set. They'll go with the planes anyway. So you're getting your advantage flying bases, your um, your quick reference sheets, your plastic tokens and templates, your aircraft cards, your action cards, and you're actually getting 12 combat dice as well, which you can use standard D6 by the looks of things, but um, still it's nice to have. And you're getting some sort of card game tokens and things as well, like I already mentioned, that are slightly thicker than the things you got there with Strike. So I've, I've kind of doubled up on a lot of that stuff, but the total price I've paid is still... Um, less than, than £50 for essentially two starter sets. And there you've also got these proper plastic measuring um, devices and things rather than the very thin card ones that you got with Airstrike. And I think there's a, a fun addition of some, some card bombers and things so you can do some different missions and some, some, um, some ships as well to use this kind of flat 2D terrain, which is a bit of cool. Now, I decided I wanted to do a fairly quick paint job on these um, I didn't want this to necessarily become a massive project. If I love, fall in love with the game and it's something that um, I end up collecting massive air fleets for and, and playing loads of things, then so be it. That's fantastic. But that wasn't the, the goal, really. The goal was to pick up a game I, I was sort of interested on the periphery with, have a bit of fun with it, and not invest a ridiculous amount of time as I haven't invested lots of money. So I, I wanted to do fairly quick and easy paint schemes for the miniatures, get them on the table, play some games, and we'll take it from there. And then if I decide I want to add lots and lots of more aircraft than I can do, if it stays like that, that I've got four small sets of different planes from, from different nations, um, and I just crack them out every now and then for a game or something, then that's also cool as well. I have no expectations beyond this, but if I fall in love with the game, then no doubt I'll pick up some extra bits and bobs. The miniatures cleaned up fairly well because it's that soft plastic um, I found that the Games Workshop mould um, removing tool worked quite well, where but slightly better than just filing. Um, a sharp modelling knife is, is also handy as well, uh, but maybe not if you're picking this up for, for, for younger people. Um, and I know Army Painter do their own sort of mould um, removing tool, which is a little bit cheaper than the Games Workshop one. But if you haven't tried it um, and you thought, well, what's this? I've always had blades. It's, they're actually a lot better than you think. And um, I, I picked one up after a while and, and thought they're a lot better. Now, I did a little bit of research into paint schemes, but n nothing beyond sort of Googling images and things. I've not gone deep into to reading books. I picked up some schemes I think would have been around Battle of Britain time. I ordered um, transfers from, from Warlord Games um, for the Spitfires and for the BF-109s as they, they weren't included in the box. And I definitely wasn't going to be painting those on. And I think without them, they no way they would look quite as cool. Um, and I think miniatures at this scale with a nice simple paint job, the, uh, the decals can really, really make them stand out. Um, I have produced um, painting tutorials for the Spitfire and for the BF-109. Well, I've recorded them at this stage. Um, and I'll be putting them up over the, the coming weeks. Um, let me know in the comments which one you'd like to see first, whether it's the BF-109 or the Spitfire. But um, I managed to paint them relatively quickly, not super quick. Um, I think you could you could probably paint a, a set of six of them in a, in a day or so quite easily and get a decent result um, and a very basic result, maybe sort of four or five hours or something like that. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the way they came out. Um, there's, there's no sort of shading there. I use the airbrush. Um, the method I used, you could you could use with a with a standard hairy brush as well. I did use some some liquid masking. But again, you could you could paint those markings on directly. Um, and then I gloss varnished, added the decals, and and then added some oil washes, which kind of provided the shadowing and and went into all the panel work and things. Um, and I'm pretty happy with the way they turned out in the end. Now I suppose the next step is going to be to find some time just to play a couple of games and just sort of test out the rules and see how they go. Maybe get my son involved, it might be a bit of fun. Um, I'm not quite sure how complicated they are, I've watched some few videos that didn't look too complicated, um, but I'm not quite sure how well they will work online. I think um, that the uh, the age on the back of the box says 14, so that's maybe a little bit much for my for my eight-year-old, but um, he's quite bright with these things, so we shall see. And uh, at some point in the future, I'll report back and let 
let you know how it's gone. I'm not going to turn this into a sort of a, a, a big project vlog series like I have for some of the other game systems, though, unless lots and lots of people request more and more videos on this. As I said, I've already re recorded the painting tutorials to show how I did the miniatures inside. I'd love to hear from you guys if you've played this game um, or if you play other games like it that you'd recommend. I know some people play Wings of Glory and there must be lots of other air combat games out there. So in the comments, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the system or other maybe better systems or things you prefer. Uh, maybe some things I can try to use these models for. I'm not going to spend lots more money on this for now unless I really fall in love with it. I may pick up a couple of bomber models so I can do some escort scenarios and things. I think that could be fun. And again, let me know your thoughts on that. I'll be really interested. But it's been fun as a nice little palette cleanser just to, just to work on something, something different and something quite basic paint-wise, really. Anyway, I'll leave it there until I've played some games and I'll get those painting tutorials up over the next few weeks for those of you who are interested. If you are new to the channel, please do check out the other videos. You might well find something there you like or something that interests you. Um, there's lots of painting tutorials on there. I am a commission painter by trade, so I tend to do a lot of painting videos. Um, I've covered World Games' Epic Battles, Waterloo, and an American Civil War fairly extensively with reviews, um, project vlogs, and painting tutorials. There's bolt action videos on there as well, and painting tutorials. There's Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game, um, and other Lord of the Rings with Battle of Five Armies in 10 mil, um, and lots of other little bits and bobs as well. So it's well worth checking the channel out. If you see what you like, um, give us a subscription. It really, really helps us out. And if you've enjoyed the video, do consider giving us a like. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you soon.